Welcome back to People and Places. This has been a discussion on the history of the Osunadu Klote people. The first part was pretty much interesting. And for the second part, we are delving straight into their staple foods, their culture, major roles, as well as other traditions of the clan. Come with me, let's learn something. Our next segment is going to be on the major landmarks of Osu as well as traditions that govern Osu. So, Wilomo, we are going to talk about the landmarks. And can you tell us the major landmarks of Osu? Okay. The first thing that I will make mention of is the Kwate Lagoon. Okay. Now, from the Kwate Lagoon, we have our shrine, the Nadu Shrine. Which is located at the beach. And then we have the Bakke Shrine, mm -hmm. which was located in Thailand, which is presently in this house. Okay. Then we have the Obenesu Stream. Obenesu. Obenesu Stream. Then we have the Wow Stream at the uh, old Polo Grounds. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Latokwen Stream, which is presently uh, almost gone, but in the location of it is where we presently have the King Takita Yua statue. There used to be a stream there. It's a lagoon, it's a, a small pond, oh, okay. which we call Latokwe. And then going northwards, you meet the uh, Dakubi <coughs> stream, the Onyatian stream, the Krabeshwe stream, which is also another ancient uh, place that uh, we really consider sacred. The name Krabeshwe uh, stemmed out of the fact that in those days, when there is acute shortage of water, when there is drought and you cannot find water, that particular pond never dries and it's always as clear and clean as if it has been distilled. So the people around from Aquapim and even all the environs, they call that place Kra, Beshe. Mm. We call people to come and see mm. that water. Okay. No matter how many people who come there to fetch, it is still how it stays the way it is. Mm. That is why it is Kra, Beshe. So these are the major landmarks and then the Ejanote Hill, which is presently corrupted to, to be known as Ajangote, it is not Ajangote, it's Ejanote. Ejanote? Ejanote. The, the hill where we have that broadcasting uh, antenna, oh. we call it Ajangote, Ajangote. It's not Ejangote, it's Ejanote. Mm. Because he was a fetish priest, a witch doctor, and he was healing the people around. He was the one who performed what we call the Gbeshi. For Osei Tutu to be born. The Beshi for Osei Tutu, that is the. Well, account. his mother, a queer free year, okay. she was burying at that time. And when in those days, when they were, they want to perform some rit rites and rituals for you, for you to be fertile, we call that Beshi. About Tilile Beshi. So when that thing is performed, then your womb is open, then you can have children. That is why. Uh, that was performed for a queer free year and was said to two, the first was born. Mm. So he was born in Osu? Not in Osu, on the Aquapim Hills. The Aquapim Hills. At Tutu. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Alright, um, aside that, do we have any monuments or buildings that was from ancient Osu Yeah, days? we have the, uh, what we call the Brandes Burgess Fort. That is, we call it Tolomon. We call it Tolomon, but it's for the Brandesburgers. That is the German uh, merchants. Mm -hmm. And it is right near the traffic light at the, the castle road here. From the traffic light, you move about, say, three blocks, then you get to it. It is there. And then, apart from that, our uh, old 
castle which has been modified by Kwame Nkrumah, which you now can't see the old monument, but you go there and see modern buildings. And that is what we have. Oh, okay. And um, I'm interested about one um, landmark, that is the Black Star Square. The Black Star Square? Yes. Yeah, that was constructed by Kwame Nkrumah before, okay. that was somewhere in 1961, 1962. Mm. Yeah. What, what was but, its name? Uh, the name? What, yes, because it wasn't originally. Uh, originally, we called that place Nyamuji. Nyamu, Nyamuji mm. and that was where we have a stream we call Nyamuji. That is where, when we bring the fetish priestesses and the uh, fetish priests from training, that, was, that is where we bring them, we clean them, we ablute them, then they become sacred and then we bring them into town. Mm. Then we have the wow. It's also a small pond at the old polo ground. And it's still there? It's still there. Recently when they acquired the place, the government acquired the place for this uh, marine drive tourist mm. thing, we just we applied to them and told them we don't want that thing to be deleted. So they had to preserve it. Okay, and still on monuments and then notable places. So I learned of oh, history as usual. Okay, if you want modern monuments, then I can give you a lot of them because yeah. we have the airport in Osu. We, we have, have the airport. yes, the airport is in Osu. It's not in Labadi. Airport. Yes, the Kutuka International Airport is in Osu. <laughs> oh, okay. The Jubilee House is in Osu. Land Commission is in Osu. So all the ministries, geographical yes. All the ministries that governs Ghana is in Osu. Oh. Wow. The Legon, the first university, is in Osu. The Cambridge College, which we now call Achmota School, is in Osu. Yeah. Yes. So where else is Osu? Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone thinks just this section no, no, is no, Oxford no, no, Street. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The survey school. So where does Osu end? Where does it start? Yeah. Where does it end? From the boundary in the south, we have the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. On the east, we have the Obenesu Stream, just behind the La Polyclinic. Okay. On the west, we have the boundary road or what we presently <laughs> call the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue. Mm. On the north, you, go, you get to Adenkrebi. You know Adin Crib? No. <laughs> After Brekusu. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. Oh, then also, also is, is really. Yes, sesame. It's a large. Fito. Hacho. Mm. Papao. Akpoma. And all those places are all in Osu. Adin Crib be Osu. Oh, okay. Ayim. Ajamanti. All in Osu. Pongpo. Mm. Mpawasem. All in Osu. So there's the famous Oxford Street. Mm -hmm. Was it called Oxford Street or the name has. Uh, we, that was not called Oxford Street in the ancient times. We called them, we called that place uh, the Cantonments Road. Okay. Because we had the uh, veterans who returned from the Second World War who were. Uh, domiciled in that area by the British government. So they built uh, structures. Though it is those structures which house the military people who was known as cantonment. Mm. Yes. So that street was known as cantonment road. So how did the name Oxford come about? That was named by those uh, business people who have been coming there to put up their restaurants and other things. And then uh, the British uh, embassy is also near that place. It's just about half a kilometer from that place. So they called it Oxford Street. Yeah. So it wasn't originally Oxford Street, no. So cantonment. cantonment. Do they have to seek permission? from the Osu chief or Wulomo before changing I don't name. remember anything like that because I have been in this tradition for over 20 years and I don't remember anything like that. The name just changed and it's no, stuck? No. Okay. And also it's, it's said that there's a shrine in the Osu castle. That is the Nadu shrine. 
Okay. Is it still? It's still okay. there. So you, as a wool do you go there? Uh, I have to be going there. But presently, as we're talking, uh, if you read some some of these political or what I would call psychological books, you see that when some people are being uh, crippled by strength, their sovereign rights are being taken away from them. They attack your culture, they attack your education, and then they attack your language. So the first thing that Kwame Nkrumah did to cripple the Osu people from becoming popular or strong was to capture our shrine. So he coercively, coercively deceived our elders and told them he just wanted to make that place look nice. And then he built a fence around that shrine. So we need to seek permission from the government before we go there because there's security zone. Okay, but if I may ask, what is the purpose of the shrine? That is the nucleus of the Osu people. That is our religious knob. Mm. Without the shrine, we wouldn't be here. That is where we believe our Wulomo can communicate between God and man. It is our cathedral. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So was it? I want to get it right. Was it um, built before the Osu Castle or it was built after? It was built before the Osu Castle and that was the more reason why our elders did not allow the castle to come near it. Mm. Why? Because why? It why is sacred. It? Okay. And we don't know, we have a lot of abominations that when you perform, when you go get into it, you don't go near the shrine. We have a lot of rituals that you have to perform before you become holy to get into the shrine. So you need to be extremely holy to get into the shrine. That is why the Wuromo was taken away from political or administrative business. Because he need not meet people who are unclean to our religion. Okay. And um, also, who is eligible aside you, the Wuromo? Who is eligible to go to the shrine? Anybody who has uh, the Otofo rights and the Bozo right, who have been taken through that right, is eligible to go there. Okay. And before you go there, three days prior to the time that you go there, you have to remain clean and pure. Mm. You don't go near a woman. Mm. You don't eat what is not supposed to be eaten. Like? Uh, in our in those days, we don't eat condo and enter the shrine. Yeah, so you don't eat it for three days before you go into the shrine. <laughs> okay, so so we are talking about shrine. I want to divert to the religion. What's the religion of the Usu people? The Nadu religion. Mm. Can you tell us about it? We believe that uh, Ata Na Nyongbo is our deity. So when we say Boma Wu, we are referring to the creator of the universe, the whole universe. We don't have anything like our Father and the Son and the, uh, and the Holy Spirit, no. But we believe in the creator of the universe. And we believe that Wherever there is holiness, serenity, that spirit is there. And that is why we keep our shrines very holy and isolated. That's all. It is not about fetishism, no. No, we don't go there. Okay. Is it because you are Levites? Yes. Okay. So you came along? We came along with, with those it. traditions. So whatever is being performed, like the, uh, what I'll call the festivals of uh, grains, festivals of trees, festivals of rocks, festivals of all the, all the festivals you see in the Bible, we perform all in our shrine. Oh, okay. 
you mentioned that one of the things one is not supposed to involve involve himself or herself and when it comes to food especially is not to take corns um any food related to corn yes three days prior to going three to the days shrine. prior to the place okay i want to find out about the festival homowo mm -hmm. it's made from corn yes it is so, unleavened corn oh okay <laughs> <laughs> it is unleavened corn mm. you see we don't use leavened corn that is uh, bloated corn or what i would say to to prepare that pork boy, yeah. we use fresh corn. Mm -hmm. We don't ferment it, no, unfermented corn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are in tra uh, festivals right now. Can yeah. you tell us about Homo? Is it the okay. same for every ga in Teshi, Nungwa, Labadi? Prior to uh, our coming here, there was nothing like Homo. We didn't celebrate Homo. Mm -hmm. Homo started from the Ayuwaso hill. That was when uh, our people were attacked by these same Akwamu people. Mm -hmm. So they had to go into hiding. Then they did not make noise for the Akwamu to see or know where they have relocated. So they had to stay in the forest. So the millet exercise patient be hungry or let's say I, I won't say hungry they, they they didn't starve themselves but they fasted and prayed until the millet became uh, harvestable and they harvested it so when they harvested it and had something to eat they became stronger and they attacked the aquamus and drove them away that is why uh, when it is homo what we call it hooting at hunger we are hooting at the aquamus we drove away so is that are you in a way saying that aquamus made the guns hungry yes mm. so okay. after we had had food to eat we chased them out okay but you said earlier that it was a fasting and prayer yes when your fasting. enemy attacks you mm. what do you do you pray for success you pray for victory so we believe in prayers. That is why we are the Nadu clan. We believe strongly in prayers to the omnipotent creator. Okay. Trust me, when an Osu man raises the bottle of gin and pray, whatever he asks for, he gets it. Okay. All right. So I want to know the food. What's every every tribe has their staple food. What is the food for the Osu people? Osu and the guys all we enjoy komi. Do you know komi? Kenke. Yeah. <laughs> and banku. And then Osu has a typical food which we call amanya. Do you know amanya? No. The three people call it kokonte. Ah, face the wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We enjoy it very much. And um, what I want to talk about chieftaincy. Mm -hmm. How do you select your chiefs? We are a patrilineal clan, mm. and uh, formerly we had no chief. But when the British came here, our Wulomo, one of our Wulomos known as Teno, was not supposed to meet the British. But he flaunted the orders of the elders, mm. met the British. So the elders attempted even uh, lynching him. Mm. So he ran away and went to Akwamu. And from Akwamu, he came back with Asamani and they went to the castle. And the British people accepted him as the head and the leader of the Osu people. So he was, Teno was the first chief. Osu. Mm. And for that reason, Noi Osekang being the Wuromo at that time also refused to uh, recognize him as a chief. So he also installed his own son as the Mankralu. So Osu was the first state along the coast from Adan to Winneba to install a Mankralu. Mm. Okay. Okay, so since then, 
is it the Wulomo who who chooses the chief? No, uh, the chief is chosen from the family, the royal families. We have two royal families at King Kanwe, as we're talking to you. Okay, let me come to the uh, quarters that we have. We have four quarters in Usu, as, I, as I'm speaking now. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, King Kanwe quarter, the Ashente quarter, and then the Anoho quarter and the Alata quarter. The Anoho, Anoho people are typically uh, Anoho people who came here to seek uh, help in war. Mm -hmm. But they came and met us also going to the Angra War in 1731. Mm -hmm. So they had to join us to the Angra War. So from the Angra War, some, most of them set, settled on the, um, that is the eastern border of Osu. So they dealt, they intermarried the Labadi people, so most of them are in Labadi and part of them are in Osu. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Alata people, who were mostly uh, workers of the British people who were constructing the uh, castle. Mm -hmm. we, they came from Alata. And then when they came in, because uh, they needed bigger canoes, mm -hmm. so they invited their brothers from uh, Aja, to come in, help them with their canoes, to carry the quota, cement, and the building materials, rocks, and other things for the uh, diming of the castle foundation. Mm -hmm. So they, they also came to settle among us. So we call them the Alata people. Now we have the Ashanti people. Most of the people do say that the Ashanti people are uh, Ashanti's, Ashanti <coughs> remnants. No, it is not so. When the bombardment, when in the days of the bombardment, most of us ran away. And when we were going, we left one of our brothers known as Tete. So he remained here. So when we mentioned his name, we used to say, Ashi Tete. Ashi Tete. Meaning? Uh, we left Tete behind, so he remained here. So we call this place Ashit Tete Bruhun. Tete, the Tete we left, this is his quarter. Ashit Tete Bruhun. You see, so uh, most of the Ashantis too who came here because of the Brandesburgers fought at uh, Tolomon. So they happened to live around us here and trading with the white men. So normally when people are going, when you are in Ashanti, but it's Ashit Tete Blohun. It is not Ashanti Blohun. No. The name has been corrupted to Ashanti Blohun. It's Ashit Tete Blohun. Then we have the King Kanwe. The reason why that place is known as the King Kanwe is because of Teno, who was recognized by the King of England as the leader of the Osu people. So we call that place King Crownway. The king has crowned him. So it has no interconnection with Kinka in Accra, no. The naming of guns. The what naming of guns. So we everyone says once you are a gun, you are called ni na without even adding the other names that comes with it. So is every Osu person called ni or na or mm. there's a difference? No, there is a difference. Uh, that ni or na prefix on our names is a reverence that is given to the elderly because our names emanate from our great great grandfathers we are a typical levitical people so before even you are born you have your name already yes so we have a nomenclature that is why we have an appellation of these Osu people, we, they call them Osu Kadipo, the Osu people who mark strangers. <laughs> because when you come amongst us, definitely you cannot have our name. Because we will not call our child Kwekuba or Kweku Teria for you also to emulate that name. Mm -hmm. We have our traditional names, Norte, Naku, Nole, Noko, Ashoko, Shome. You see, so we fall in that line, that that is the Nadu Levitical names. Okay. Yeah. So before a child is born, if the father is naughty and that child is born and she is a female, we know that that female's name is uh, Shome. 
Mm. So Norte has an appellation of Shomeche, even if he is young. Okay, even pr before he gives birth to his girl, he is known as Shomeche, Shomeche because they know that the moment he grows up and has a child, and if the first born to be a woman or a girl, that girl's name is Shome. Shome. So Na Shome. Na Shome, yeah. because she is not the first Shome, yeah. and the first Shome died somewhere in uh, 1618. So she was our grandmother. So if that grandmother's name has been given to you, they have to revere the name. That is why they say na, na, ni, and na. Yes. They are ancient names. Okay. Okay. So I want to chip in something. Just like me, I'm from the Porty House. So I'm the first girl of my dad. So automatically, I'm na oyo. Mm. Then the one who comes after me is Kwati Oko. Mm. Then it goes. So mm -hmm. it's similar to that. It's similar. Okay. That is the Ghan Levitical names. Mm. In Ghan, you cannot have a child from the Kwati family and say uh, he is called Ajima. Mm. No, we, we don't do that. Oh, let's name him after his uncle. No, we don't do that. Aja, Fred, Aja, 